Welcome to the Wireless Land News Desk for December 14th, 2018. My name is Tom Carpenter. I'm the CTO at CWNP. And this week on the Wireless Land News Desk and for the next few weeks, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're nearing the end of the year and getting very close to a new year. It's often a time of New Year's resolutions and people looking at what they wanted to accomplish in the previous year and planning what they want to accomplish in the next. And so I thought I'd take some time over the next few weeks with the Wireless Land News Desk to talk about some certification preparation tips. And here in the first part, I want to start with knowing what you must know. It is absolutely essential that when we prepare for any certification, we know what we need to know. And this always starts with the exam objectives. You want to begin right here. It's the starting point for study. And it's the final review document on exam day. In other words, before you ever pull out a study guide or start watching an e-learning program or use a practice exam, you want to start by looking at the objectives. I have noticed many times over the years in talking with people that they say they're preparing for an exam and they have the study guide and it might even have the objectives in the study guide. And yet they tell me they haven't really looked at the objectives. They just started reading at chapter one. Well, that's a dangerous thing to do. Becoming familiar with the objective causes your radar to go up and allows you to detect when important information is being covered because you recall that in the objectives, it listed this information. I encourage you to use the objectives well. So how do you use objectives? Well, first of all, read the preamble. And what I mean by this is usually in an exam objectives document, particularly for information technology certifications, there will be a paragraph or two at the beginning that kind of tells you any prerequisites, any suggested knowledge you should already have, things like that. This is important to know because when they suggest that you need to have this existing knowledge, they're saying to you that in addition to the specific objectives we're going to list here, we assume you already know these other things. So if right at the preamble, you've already run into some things you're not really that familiar with, you're going to need to make sure you brush up your knowledge in those areas as well. Then you want to make sure you know the knowledge domains. These are the knowledge areas, the general areas covered by the exam. There are usually anywhere from three to even as high as I've seen 10 or 11 of these knowledge domains. And you want to really make sure you know them well. Know the percentage of each knowledge domain that is covered on the exam. And then you're going to use the objectives kind of like a checklist. So as you're studying, have a printed copy of the objectives or maybe a version in PDF or something like that and use a PDF editor that allows you to highlight or in some way indicate that you feel really comfortable with an objective. And as you become very comfortable with each objective, you can check it off the checklist. Also, ensure that all terms can be clearly defined. Now, notice I didn't say ensure all terms are clearly defined. You see, the terms are just used in the objectives. You should be able to define each and every term that's mentioned in those objectives. So that's a great thing to really test your knowledge. Go through the objectives and ask yourself, can I define all of these terms? If you can't even get to the definition level, then it's very unlikely you could answer practical questions related to it as well. So make sure all terms can be clearly defined. Also, be careful to pay attention to the language. What I mean by this is look for identifying words like define or describe. This means that you need to explain how or what. You need to explain how something works or you need to explain what something is. So define what, describe, explain how. And then design or plan. Okay, now you need to be able to take a scenario that might be presented to you and choose the right way to implement the technology being tested to meet the objectives, the requirements of that scenario. What if you see keywords like configure or implement? Now we're talking about procedures, right? The ability to actually do things. For example, if it's a wireless certification like those that we offer at CWNP and it says configure an access point, well, then you need to understand the different ways you can configure an access point so that you can answer questions related to that. What if it says analyze or troubleshoot? Well, this is telling you, okay, I need to know the inner workings of the system so that I can look at what's happening that shouldn't be happening and figure out why, right? So I need to troubleshoot it. So pay attention to the language. I always suggest 
that you read the objectives front to back several times before you actually begin studying. Become very familiar with it. And here's a tactic that I have used that's worked well for me. I'll actually read the objectives, read the first chapter of a study guide, read the objectives again, read the second chapter, read the objectives again, read the third chapter. I'll actually do that. Now, you might think that seems odd, but let me tell you, it works very well. And remember, this is not just where you start, it's where you end. Right before I go into an exam, this is just Tom's way. Right before I go into an exam, guess what I do? I reread the objectives one last time. Because quite often, you can answer questions just because you're intimately familiar with the objectives. But there are a couple of other things that we can do in order to know what we need to know. We can use social networks and forums. So you can ask experienced or certified individuals for guidance. Of course, be careful not to breach NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, if you are the expert giving guidance. So you can't tell them actual exam items that are on the exam, but you can give them ideas for how deep their knowledge needs to be in areas and so forth. And these are the kinds of things to ask in these forums or social networks like Twitter and so on. Ask, how much do I need to know about this topic? And is this topic heavily covered on the exam? Those kinds of things are fair game and they can be discussed, but don't ever ask them to tell you questions that are on the exam because you're actually asking them to breach the NDA. And if in a public forum, they tell you a question that's on the exam, their certification could actually be nullified. So please don't ask people to breach the NDA, but do take advantage of these social networks and search the forums for guidance. Look for past questions that people might have asked that can also help you. And finally, use study guides. These are books that are focused on the exam, and they're written by those who've taken the exam and by subject matter experts. So they should know the topic well, and they should be familiar with at least a subset of the items that are in the exam. And so this can be very helpful in your study process. Use the study guides. They're there to help you narrow in on the major topics that you need to study. It's not necessarily that the study guide is the only resource you're going to use but it's going to give you most of the knowledge that you require. They will also often include practice tests and other learning aids that can help you, maybe flashcards, things like that, that may or may not come with these different study guides that are available by different publishers. So use study guides because someone else has already thought about what you need to know, and they've tried to put it together for you in a book. So in summary for this first part, knowing what you must know, remember, use exam objectives, use social networks and forums, and use study guides. In later parts, I'll talk to you more about study techniques, about diet, which is very important in leading up to the exam day. I'll talk to you about my exam day. What does it look like on Tom Carpenter's exam day? Because people have asked me that a lot over the years, as I've helped people pass a lot of certifications over the last 20 years. So I'll give you a lot more tips before this year is out, and hopefully, this will get you ramped up for your New Year's resolutions to get those certifications under your belt. Well, that's all I have today. Thank you for joining me for this edition of the Wireless Land News Desk. It's been a little bit different, and the next few will be as well. But I hope you'll find this information valuable. If there's a topic you'd like me to talk about in the Wireless Land News Desk, other than just the news, always feel free to let me know. You can post on Twitter and tag at Carpenter Tom to get my attention. You can email me as well, tom at cwnp.com. Any of these methods will allow you to get a hold of me and let me know, hey, Tom, I'd like you to talk about this topic in the Wireless Land News Desk, and I'll be glad to do so. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next week.